evening. Yes, and my colleague, uh, Dr. Junior Tu, is here as well. Welcome to ICC uh, webinar today. Professor Fayez is always the family member of Chang'an Forum, and he is one of the most supportive colleagues to Chang'an member, Chang'an Cranial Facial Team in the ICC. Professor Fayez's team has performed more than 26,000 free clap lip and palate surgery all over the world, including Rwanda, Mexico, Philippines, and the Morocco, and so on. He is going to establish a new hospital at Lahore, Pakistan, where free surgeries will be provided to those who in need, such as the clap lip and palate, craniofacial deformities. Yeah, currently, Professor Fayez is the president to lead Pakistan's Association of Plastic Surgeons. Today, Professor will present the topic of radical dissection of greater palatine vessels during its primary or secondary palate repair and the wide clap palate repair, how we do it. As well, today we are so honored to have two very important panelists, Professor Takayuki Honda, the IWAT Medical University Japan, and the Professor Nisha Murari, Ganga Hospital, India. So can wait to learn from Professor Fayez. So Professor, please, thank you. So can you see my screen now, please? Yeah, sure. Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. Uh, you, professor can make it full screen. Okay, okay. can you see it now? Yes, it's perfect. Okay, yes. thank you. Very good. So, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, with the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. I am very much thankful to the organizer of the ICC webinar from Shangan Memorial Hospital, Taiwan, to let me share our experience with the friends from all over the globe. The topic I'm going to discuss today, the radical dissection of greater palatine vessels and the repair of wide cleft palate, how we do it. So this is our Pakistan Association of Plastic Surgeons, our foundation, Cleft Lip and Palate Association of Pakistan, Shangan Memorial Hospital, and Operation Smile for which I have been working for the last 10 years. So I, I have been, uh, I'm professor of plastic surgery and I have attended the Shangung Forum 2002, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, and 19. And hopefully again, many times. So this was the, my first forum in 2002 with Professor Philip Chen, Dr. Kai Fang Hung, Professor Chang, and Professor Jurichin, who invited us for a dinner in the golf club. And these are some of the pictures from the cleft workshop organized in Pakistan, the first one, 2004 in Faisalabad, Professor Philip Chen, Kai Fang Hung, Dr. Bovan Chil from Thailand. This one was in 2005, late Professor Ian Jackson, Professor Langelo, and Dr. Le Hui Lim from Malaysia. Again in 2007 in Lahore, Professor Philip Chen and Dr. Uh, Dr. Cho from South Korea. And again in 2011 at Lahore. So the whenever we want to repair the cleft palate, we have two objectives. We want to reconstruct, reconstruct a barrier between oral and nasal cavities and we want to have good speech production. If the cleft palate is not repaired, the velopharyngeal well will remain always incompetent and the speech is unintelligible. We cannot understand the speech of the patient. So the minimum age we have repaired a palate is nine to 12 months but we have operated many patients beyond 50 years of age because I still remember 
the advice of Professor uh, Professor Nudaf during one of the mission, uh, so, so, during one of the workshop at Shangan. And he was asked a question, what is the maximum age when we can repair a pellet? And he replied that you should repair the pellet at any age when the patient presents. Even if the speech does not improve, if you create a barrier between the oral and the nasal cavities, you have benefited your patient. So most of the technique uh, people use uh, around the globe, but we usually use long and back repair or modified by modified, I mean, when we make incision only on the right side or the left side. And then for the complete and unilateral and bilateral, mostly we use Bardak 2 flap palatoplasty. So what, what are the problems in the pellet repair? The tissues are short in the hard pellet and tissues are short in the soft pellet. If the tissues are not released properly, we will close under tension, suture will get through, with suture will cut through and we can get dehiscence and fistula may occur. Another problem in pellet repair, which is in a problem in the paradox, if the tissues have been released properly, but the suture knots are put too tight, it may lead to necrosis, dehiscence, and fistula. So what should we do when we want to repair a pellet? We should adequately release the tissues. We need to release the nasal mucosa. We need to dissect the muscle and we need to raise the mucoperiosteal flap. And we have a policy that we always do radical dissection of greater palatine vessel to increase the mobility of the mucoperiosteal flap. Whether we do it on one side or we do it on both side depends on our patient. So we usually uh, uh, use a solution. Uh, we usually, sorry, we usually uh, use a solution. Sorry. We usually use a solution of xylocaine with adrenaline and we usually add trenizamic acid and we will usually wait for seven minutes in small kids. But if the patient is adult, or a secondary patient, especially an adult patient, we will wait for seven minutes. So that the effect of adrenaline and trenizamic acid are evident. So we need to do proper incision and undermining. We usually need to make incision at the medial margin, undermine the, undermine the nasal mucosa and vomer to get a comfortably closed nasal layer closure. So I usually use the tip of suction cannula to raise the mucoperiosteal flap and I would usually push uh, the cannula against the bone so that the mucoperiosteal flap can be raised on, on each side. For the pedicle release, I would separate the greater palatine vessel from the mucoperiosteal flap as far as needed to get the tension-free closure. And I usually use a double curved ele elevator, a posterior to the pedicle. And then when I can see the pedicle, I will use knife to get more release of the pedicle, like over here. So uh, when we, keep, we can see the pedicle, we will take the knife and we will leave enough tissue, uh, even we will leave enough cuff of tissue around the pedicle to release it away from the mucoperiosteal flap. And you can see we start it from here and the pedicle has been released comfortably. Even we can release up till this level as well. So the pedicle released on the right side. Now the pedicle has been released on the left side as well. You can see in, an, in a, another patient, pedicle released on the right side and pedicle released on the left side. So I usually use continuous suture on the nasal mucosa 
I will use Wicked 5.0 or sometimes 4.0. Uh, when we use, and we always use continuous switcher on the oral mucosa as well. Using the continuous switcher will save time and switcher. And this paper was published in PRS Global Open in 2018, and it was awarded Best Southeast Asian Paper Award. The radical resection paper was also published in PRS Go in 2000, 2017. So then uh, we dissect the muscle. We will try to bring the levator as far posteriorly as possible, very near to the uvula, and we will fix both the levator uh, very near to the uvula, taking a good bite of the uh, nasal mucosa at the uvula. Now you can see the nasal air has been closed, the flaps have been dissected. Now we are going to dissect the levator on both sides, and then we will put three switcher to fix the levator as far posteriorly, very near to the uvula. And I would, I would advise all my colleagues that whenever you want to suture the levator, take a good bite of the nasal mucosa very near to the uvula so that the muscle remain fixed posteriorly as far as possible. So when we start suturing the levator, we take a bite of the right levator then we take a bite of the nasal mucosa just anterior to the uvula, going across the suture line, coming out through the nasal mucosa on left side. Then we take a bite of the left levator, making it a mattress suture. Then one more mattress suture anterior, and one more mattress suture posterior to the first suture will complete the fixation of the levators. Then, uh, when we are going to close the oral layer, we usually use mattress suture at the uvula to get better approximation. And then we will use continuous suture till the anterior end of the defect. Uh, if uh, Sometimes you can use two interrupted suture in the soft palate area. How we fill the lateral defect? Either we use buccal fat pad flaps or we use gelatin foam placed in the lateral defect we always put two loose sutures to cover the gelatin foam to stop falling it in the oral cavity or in the pharynx. So what are the post-op instructions? We usually advise our patient to use liquid diet only for three weeks. And we allow them to take water, juice, milk, melted ice cream, or very uh, diluted yogurt. Uh, we have a policy for a follow-up. Uh, we usually keep the patient overnight at the hospital uh, and we examine the patient 24 hours after the surgery. And then at one week, three weeks, three months, six months, and one year. Even when we go for missions in Pakistan or Afghanistan, we have a policy that we will examine the patient at 24 hours, at one week, then at four weeks and then at 12 weeks. At four weeks and 12 weeks, our speech pathologist will also, will also go to the mission site and examine every patient. So modified lung and back procedure, it means that we will make incision only on the right side. You can see that if we have made incision only on the right side, the pedicle has been dissected. On the left side, all the dissection will be done uh, through the medial side. The levators have been dissected and levators are being sutured. And there is no incision on the left side. And this is after 24 hours. Bardak 2 flap palatoplasty in unilateral complete cleft palate patients. An adult patient. So, the nasal mucosa has been closed. The levators are being sutured. You can see the both pedicles have been dissected widely to facilitate the medial movement of the pedicles, medial movement of the mucoperiaptal flap. And after 24 hours. Another adult patient, 
and after one week or after three weeks, another adult patient, another adult patient, another adult patient. This patient was 47 year old and I operated him in 2006 uh, at, at uh, Sogra Shafi Medical Complex in Narawal, probably 50 or 70 kilometers from Lahore. And uh, a team from uh, United Kingdom visited this hospital and he went to see those consultants and they refused to operate him because they thought that the, uh, he is too much of age to get any benefit from pallet repair, but we operated him. And this is after probably 24 hours. Then he had some minor issues in the pallet, but it lit, at the end it healed uh, comfortably. And now I can understand his voice even on cell phone because we did uh, the levator dissection and fixed the muscle as far posteriorly as possible. So bilateral complete cleft pallet, we usually do Bardak two flap palletoplasty. This was a very wide cleft pallet patient. The pre-maxilla was tilted to the right side. So in the first stage, as a policy, we always do the adhesion. In bilateral patient where the premaxilla is protruded and the name is not available. So medial incisions, marking for the lateral incisions. The nasal has been closed, the levators have been fixed and you can see the pedicle widely dissected on both sides and this is after six months. So radical dissection of pedicle in secondary cases, an anterior fistula. So this is the marking for the incision on both sides. So even the, there the fistula under on the, on, on the lateral side as well. So the nasal layer has been closed, the pedi, the levators have been dissected. You can see the pedicle dissected on the right side, pedicle dissected on the left side. Levators are being fixed as far posteriorly as possible. The midline, both the mucoperiostal flaps have been approximated and they will be fixed anteriorly. This is after three months. A lateral fistula in the posterior half of the heart palate, you can see the nasal secretion coming into the oral cavity. So this is our marking. We will close the nasal layer. Then we will use the right mucoperiostal flap to be shifted to provide oral layer cover of the nasal layer cover. So you can see the nasal layer has been closed and the pedicle has been dissected widely. And the right flap has been shifted from this position to this position. So you can see the complete closure of the defect. This area was left to epithelialize on itself. This is after six months. So we started from here and we ended up here. Uh, uh, somebody had already done the pharyngeal flap in this patient. Another patient with the lateral fistula and the posterior half of the hard palate on the right side. The palate was short and the muscle movement were poor, so we decided to close the fistula. We decided to dissect the levator and we decided to add the pharyngeal flap in the same stage. So the marking for the nasal air closure and for the mucoperiostal flap and for the pharyngeal flap. So the levators have been dissected. Levators are being approximated. The soft palate has been split in the midline to allow elevation of the posterior pharyngeal, uh, 
pharyngeal flap from the posterior pharyngeal wall. So the nasal ear has been closed, and pharyngeal flap is being elevated. Pharyngeal flap has been shifted anteriorly. Pharyngeal flap is going to be sutured over here. Pharyngeal flap has been sutured, and the levator. Will be switched over the base of the pharyngeal flap, and then you can see the radical dissection of the left pedicle, and the left mucoparietal flap will provide oral layer cover for the nasal layer closure of the fistula. You can see the flap has been shifted to the right side. The pedicle can be seen gelatin foam placed. so we started from here after 48 hours and then after 6 months again a wide palatal fistula and our plan was to close the nasal layer using the nasal lining from both side and then the left flap was radically dissected and pedicle was released to provide oral layer cover And this is after three months, but the palate is quite short. So after six months, we added a pharyngeal flap. We started from here after pharyngeal flap, and this is six months after the pharyngeal flap was added. Another patient where the pedicle was damaged on the right side, so we call it subtotal right fistula. Nasal layer was closed by the turning flap, and the contralateral mucoparietal flap was used to provide oral layer cover. So this is the incision for the nasal lining on the left side, and the almost all the tissues on the right side they were used for the nasal layer closure. The left flap has been elevated. You can see the left flap elevated, the nasal layer closed, and the left flap has been shifted to the right side. This is after forty-eight hours, after two weeks, and then after two months, three months, and three months. Very large fistula on the right side, involving the midline as well as in the of the soft palate area. So we plan we will use the nasal lining to close it, and we will raise the. left mucoparietal flap so you can see the pedicle has been dissected widely almost all the tissues on the right side and under the palatal shelf on the left side are being undermined and moved medially to close the nasal ear closure so the nasal ear closure has been started nasal ear closure completed back cut to the random flap on the right side so the left flap has been elevated and moved to the right side to provide cover to the suture line of the nasal layer closure and after 48 hours and after 3 weeks after 6 weeks 6 weeks and this is after 6 months we started from here a patient with complete dissection of the palate with damage to the tissues on the right side this is the extent of the defect extent of the defect so we decided to use most of the tissues on the right side and the lining under the palate and shelf on the left side to close the nasal layer so we are using moving the palatal tissue on the right side and then from under the palatine shelf you can see the dissection of the pedicle on the left side so the left flap has been shifted to provide cover to the suture line of the nasal ear closure <coughs> and this is after 48 hours after 3 after 2 weeks after 4 weeks after 5 weeks and this is after 3 months and as you can see the palate is quite short so in the next stage we added a pharyngeal flap 
So we started from here and did up over here. And this is after six months after the fringe flap was elevated. So was used to provide improvement in the speech. So this picture was taken in 2004 with my grand teacher, late Professor Samuel Nuda, uh, Professor Tahir Sheikh from Karachi, Dr. Tanvi from Faisalabad, and uh, she was uh, Delight Greenwood from Smile Train. So thanks very much. So now we will go for, for the uh, second presentation. Uh, Hadi. Hadi. Dr. Peng, can you see my new presentation? Yes, yes, I can see the slide. Oh, the, the white left palette pictures. Yes, yes, correct. Oh, thank you, thank you. So now we are going to uh, start the, um, the second presentation, white cleft palette, how we close it. So again, the same slide, Pakistan Association of Plastic Surgeon, CLAP, our foundation for cleft surgery, Shangan Memorial Hospital, and operation smile. So white cleft palate, uh, most of our colleagues, they would, uh, they would feel difficulty to repair the white cleft palate because it, it poses many challenges. So what is the definition of a white cleft palate? When the width of one bony palatal shelf is less than one third of the width of the cleft palate, only then we can call it wide cleft palate. Most of the wide cleft palates are usually bilateral incomplete cleft palates. However, it may occur sometime even in unilateral cleft palate or even in bilateral complete cleft palate patients. So in case of wide cleft palate, our incision will go little bit more laterally at the medial margin, so we want to include more of the oral layer tissue to be used in the nasal layer to provide a comfortable nasal layer closure. A wide cleft palate, bilateral incomplete cleft palate patient. So what are the steps when we want to close a wide cleft palate patient? We have to mark our incision, medial incision, lateral incision, we need to elevate the mucoperiaptal flaps of the palatine shelf. Then we have to separate the nasal and the oral layer mucosa. And then uh, we usually do radical dissection of the pedicle on both sides to facilitate the medial movement of both the mucoperiaptal flap in the midline. Then we also need to separate the nasal mucosa, which is very much adherent to the posterior nasal spine on both sides, and also from the under surface of the palatine shelf. And then we close the nasal layer by using continuous suture. After the nasal layer has been closed, we will dissect the levator on both sides. Then we will fix the levator at just anterior to the uvula. Then we start closure of the oral layer using continuous suture. And at the end, we would like to pack the lateral defect with gelatin foam or buccal fat pad flap. And then we need to do the follow up. So the radical dissection of the pedicle, we separate the greater palatine vessel from the mucoperiaptal flap as far as needed to get tension free closure. And this slide uh, you also saw in the, my first presentation. So how we close this wide palate? This is the incision for the 
medial margin incision for the to elevate the mucoperiosteal flap so you can see both the mucoperiosteal flap has been raised and now we are going to start the uh, separation of the nasal mucosa from under the palatine shelf on both side the pedicle has been dissected on the right side pedicle dissected on the left side the nasal mucosa closure has been started nasal mucosal closure has been completed you can see the very thin bony shelf on both side the levator has been dissected and being approximated and being sutured over here the both the mucoperiosteal flap have been sutured in the midline and you can see both the pedicle widely dissected and when we are going to fix it anteriorly we always want to see is there any bleeding point from the under surface of the mucoperiosteal flap at the tip so we are going to suture it the suturing has been completed the lateral defects have been covered with gelatin foam after 3 weeks and after 6 months a wide cleft palate in an adult patient dental implant was used for protection probably uh, somebody uh, excise the pre maxilla so now you can see the medial marking the lateral marking and we are going to raise the left mucoperiosteal flap first now uh, after the flap has been raised we will dissect the nasal mucosa from under the palatine shelf on the left side you can see the uh, this is the palatal shelf palatine shelf and the nasal mucosa is being separated from the its under surface incision on the right side you can see we are taking a good amount of Uh, oral mucosa to be converted into the nasal mucosa the right mucoperiosteal flap is being separated now the you can see actually this was the oral mucosa and now we have converted it into the nasal mucosa and it is being separated from the posterior nasal spine and then we are going to separate it from the under surface of the palatine shelf on the right side still we are releasing it now you can see the right nasal mucosa is usually uh, is going across the midline on the left side so we have closed the nasal mucosa up to this level we and we have to close the nasal mucosa at this level to complete the nasal ear closure so we have removed the dental implant to facilitate the nasal ear closure so this was our marking for the closure and we have closed the nasal layer completely this is after one week and this is after 3 months complete closure another wide palate patient most of the wide palate are usually bilateral and complete palate patient you can see the width of the defect and the width of the bony palatal shelf so both flaps have been elevated we use uh, langenbach procedure in this patient the nasal layer mucosa has been closed by interrupted suture because it is a wide palate we usually put some suture over here the pedicle dissected on the left side pedicle dissected on the right side now we are going to start the levator dissection on right side the levator are being sutured together taking a good bite of the nasal mucosa the levator have been sutured midline closure have been completed and the lateral defects have been packed with gelatin foam after 1 week 
and in an, another patient, pedicle defected on the left side, pedicle defected on the right side, nasal mucosa closed, levators were dissected and sutured, and at the end of the surgery, another patient, and after one week, after four weeks after pilot repair. Most of the wide cleft palate patient end up with a short palate. So we added a pharyngeal flap to this patient. We usually add a pharyngeal flap six months after the first surgery. Another wide palate patient, and after 24 hours, after three months, another patient. So the nasal has been closed, both pedicles have been dissected, the right one, the left one, at the closure, and after four weeks. Another patient, same procedure applied, both pedicles dissected widely, levator sutured as far posteriorly, very near the uvula, and after, at the end of surgery, started, this is after one week, and this is after, this is after six months, the palate was short, so at the age of four years, we added a pharyngeal flap. Another patient at three weeks, another patient at three weeks follow up, an adult bilateral incomplete cleft palate patient, wide one, so the nasal ear closed, radical dissected at the end of surgery, follow up at three weeks and three months. Bilateral complete cleft palate patient with projecting pre maxilla. So we close the nasal layer using the midline vomer flap as well. So at after one week. Bilateral asymmetric cleft palate patient after one week. Bilateral asymmetric cleft palate patient at six months. Unilateral cleft palate patient, which is very wide anterior. So we close it completely, doing radical dissection of the pedicle on both sides at six months. Wide cleft palate patient of, in bilateral, close the nasal layer, did the levator dissection and approximation and suturing posteriorly at the end of surgery after 24 hours. Nasal ear closed, levator dissected, pedicle dissected widely, oral ear closure, and after two weeks. Unilateral right sided cleft after 48 hours and after six months. There was a fistula anteriorly, we closed it later on. And later we added a pharyngeal flap because the pellet was short. So, four weeks after the pharyngeal flap was added. Another patient, wide cleft palate patient, at six months follow up. Bilateral asymmetric, right pedicle dissected, nasal ear closed, levator switched, and after three months follow up. You can get a fistula even in a normal cleft palate patient, but there are more chances to get a palatal fistula in wide cleft palate patient. So what is our policy? If we see that there is fistula is going to happen or the fistula has already occurred, we will ask the patient to take or the ask the family to give honey with a plastic spoon three to four times daily. And we do not allow water intake for 15 minutes. The idea is we want to keep the honey within the oral cavity, very near the palatal fistula area for, uh, for many minutes. So most of the fistulas would heal spontaneously. Other may reduce in size considerably. So white cleft palate patient operated. So we got a fistula over here. The honey was started and the fistula has been healed. You can see no fistula over here. 
another patient the pedicle started on the right side on the left side the nasal mucosa being separated from the, under the palatine shelf on the right side on the left side the nasal mucosa is being closed now nasal mucosa has been closed levator are are being dissected and sutured at the end of surgery 48 hour after surgery patient developed a fistula over here this is the, the fistula six months after this surgery we added a pharyngeal flap and we closed the fistula another patient wide bilateral the wide bilateral intermuscular palate patient she got a fistula over here and we in the first stage we did complete re repair of the palate and then we added a pharyngeal flap to lengthen the palate pharyngeal flap has been added at this picture a very wide bilateral cleft palate uh, uh, bilateral incomplete cleft palate patient this probably i operated in rawalpindi holy family hospital probably in 2007 and i wanted my colleague to come forward and operate that patient but uh, nobody came forward so i had to operate this patient it took me probably in uh, at that time two and a half hour but we were uh, we were comfortable you can see this is the bony palatal shelf on the right side bony palatal shelf on the left side so we were able to close the nasal mucosa we by uh, good up uh, undermining under the bony palatine shelf both the pedicles were dissected at the end of surgery 48 hour after surgery and this is 6 months after surgery probably a bilateral intermediate cleft palate patient nasal mucosa closed levator sutured both pedicle dissected she got a fistula over this area and we uh, after 6 months we closed the fistula and we added a pharyngeal flap last patient bilateral cleft incomplete cleft palate patient medial marking lateral marking there were multiple pedicles in this patient you can see the multiple pedicles on the right side dissection under the left palatine bony shelf dissection of the nasal mucosa on the right side the nasal mucosa has been closed levator dissected and fixed posteriorly you can see the multiple pedicles at the end of surgery but we develop almost complete loss of the uh, more to two third of the palate resuturing this patient will probably need a buccinator flap or a tongue flap for closure so now we are analyzing a data of 25 patients operated over a period of 8 years and we got fistula in four patient there was bilateral necrosis of mucoperiosteal flap in one patient for the vpi we are still gathering data but we have a strong belief that most of the wide cleft palate patient will will end up in short palates so we usually do a pharyngeal flap in all our short patient and we usually limit the width of posterior pharyngeal wall uh, the we usually limit the width of pharyngeal flap to 60% of the width of the posterior pharyngeal wall to avoid any obstructive sleep apnea we have done more than 500 pharyngeal flap over the period of 10 years and i had to uh, uh, redo a pharyngeal flap probably in two or three patients because we always limit the pharyngeal flap width to 60% of the width of the posterior pharyngeal wall and we have not done any sphincter pharyngoplasty so uh, la uh, lastly i have written a book surgical atlas of cleft palate and palatal fistula it has been published by springer nature and this book uh, is already on sale at the springer website 
and this book has 109 chapters more than 1700 colored pictures 56 chapters were written by me 53 chapters were written by friends from pakistan india philippines indonesia australia from taiwan especially i would like to thank my teacher and a very good friend uh, professor philip chen and dr frank chen uh, and from egypt they wrote five or six chapter from saudi arabia netherland italy uk ecuador guatemala nicaragua peru paraguay brazil and us thanks very much for your patient listening i am very much obliged to the organizer for giving me chance to share our experience with friends from all over the globe Thank you very much, Professor Fayad, for the very detailed walkthrough of your surgical procedures. And I also have to congratulate you on the amazing results that you've accomplished. Now, um, before we move on to our panelists, we have a very special guest with us tonight. Um, I would like to invite Professor Philip Chen to say a few words. Professor Chen. Hello. Hello, Dr. Fayad. Yeah, thank you very much. Nice to see you. Yeah, nice to see you too. Uh, I really don't have much comments. Um, I personally do von Langenberg or, or buttock type two flap for the half pilot closure, and for the so pilot closure, I, I use furlough, and I do use buckle fat pad or, or geo foam for the raw surface. And for the radical dissection of the, uh, the greater parting vessels, usually I will do my dissection according to the wound tensions. My only question is for the timing of the pharyngeal flap, uh, because you, you mentioned that in, in white clap, most of them will become, sh the, after repair, the part will become short. So you need a, a, a pharyngeal flap a few weeks later or a few months later. Then why do you not use a, a primary pharyngeal flap um, to reduce the wound tension and also to lengthen the soft part in the in, in the first uh, circumstances? Yes, uh, actually most of our patients uh, are uh, they were probably one year or two years old, so we cannot add pharyngeal flap. Uh, the minimum age we do pharyngeal flap is four years. However, with increasing experience, now in uh, now we can do the pharyngeal flap even at the primary stage. We we wrote a paper uh, in last year, which was published in Annals of Plastic Surgery, and we had a population of patient six years and above, and we. Uh, uh, and we uh, randomized the patient with or without pharyngeal flap in primary cleft palate patients. And in the population where we added the pharyngeal flap, the VPI rate was quite low and the patient speech was much better. So I agree to your opinion that in, if the patient is more than four years old, we should do the pharyngeal flap at the primary stage to avoid tension in the midline. I agree to your proposal. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Professor Chen. Um, if Professor Chen does not have any more comments, then I would like to move on to our panelists. Uh, first, I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Murali. Good evening, Dr. Fayaz, and thank you for such a wonderful presentation. Um, I think you have highlighted some of the more uh, uncommon presentations of fistulae uh, that are very, very challenging, especially for beginner surgeons um, to treat and um, very excellent results. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, so with regard to the radical dissection of the greater palatine vessels, I, I read your paper, so and it was, it was very informative, uh, the technique that you'd shared. Do you recommend or do you perform the same radical dissection, the same level of radical dissection for children as well as adults? Yes. Um, yes. Uh, yes. We have a policy that uh, if the palate is soft palate or uh, let's say incomplete cleft palate, we will do 
modified Langenbeck, that means we will make lateral incision only on the right side. On the left side, we will do all the dissection from the medial side. If it is unilateral complete cleft palate or bilateral com complete cleft palate, or if it is a secondary patient, we always do the radical dissection on both sides. And we do not have any problem uh, doing the radical dissection even uh, in nine months of age or beyond 50 years of age. That, that's not a problem. The only thing is that we need to know where the pedicle is and we need to leave good amount, good cuff of tissue around the pedicle to dissect it away from the mucoperiosteal flare. Yes, thank, thank you, sir. I um, also uh, read that uh, the uh, anatomy of the pedicle differs, especially in an adult palate. So have you ever had any instances where the vessel was accidentally transected and how would you manage it if that happened? Yes, uh, actually, uh, we, have never, we have never transected the vessel in, in a single patient. However, uh, we have avulsed the pedicle uh, maybe more than 10 or 15 patients during our initial series. In adult patients, uh, there may be more than one pedicle, and these pedicles usually lie in the bony spicules. And, it is, and we have to release these pedicles from within the bony spicules to allow the medial movement of the mucoperiosteal flap to the midline. So it, it takes a good learning curve to get good experience uh, for adult uh, cleft palate patients. Thank you, sir. And my final question, would you also recommend or do you routinely use the warmer flap as well for closing the nasal layer or do you prefer just um, using the, mucos, um, the oral mucosal flap alone in wide clefts? In, in most of the wide cleft palate, especially when these are bilateral incomplete cleft palate patient, the vomer lies quite deep. So we usually do not attempt to use the vomer. We usually make the nasal cavity as one, not two nasal cavity. However, if there is a wide bilateral complete cleft palate patient or there is a wide uh, if the patient is wide bilateral complete cleft palate patient, we would use vomer as I have shown uh, two or three patients where we have used the vomer to make it two nasal cavities. Otherwise, most of the bilateral and complete cleft palate patient, we, use, we do not use the vomer because vomer is very posteriorly deeply placed. Thank you so much, Dr. Fias. You're welcome. Thank you, Professor Murali. And now I'd like to invite Professor Hunter. Ah, okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor Hayas. Nice to see yeah, you again. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think the, uh, regarding the uh, oral nasal fistula closure, I think the key is the is, uh, uh, nasal uh, mucosa closure. So uh, yes. I sometimes use the uh, auricular cartridge to reinforce the nasal uh, causal suture. How about you? Do you use uh, something like the, such uh, materials to reinforce the causal closure? Thank you. Yes. Uh, we have a one full chapter in our book, uh, the use of a cellular dermal matrix for the nasal ear closure. However, in my own series, we have never used a cellular dermal matrix for nasal ear closure. And I have never used uh, uh, conchal cartilage uh, or septal cartilage for nasal mucosal closure because we were able to undermine the nasal mucosa from under the bony palatine shelf and bring it in the midline for comfortable midline nasal closure. We have never used any material. Okay, so you uh, are not necessary even the uh, scarred uh, or nasal fistula. Yes, no, no, no never. Okay, the, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Professor Hunter. And last but not least, I'd like to invite Professor Lowe. Professor? 
Uh, hi, Dr. Fayas. Uh, oh, yeah. Thank you again. Uh, I think I can summarize your, your technique of closing uh, Y ONF or Y bread palette. I think your key is to uh, emphasize the nasal layer closure. Yes. Uh, seems that like you do a secure nasal layer closure and then mobilize the oral layer uh, to suture and and cover the nasal layer suture. Am I correct? Yes, you are right. And and thus you emphasize dissection of the pedicle uh, completely release the tension. Uh, so you have a, a big uh, low surface on, on both sides that allow to regenerate over time. So uh, yes, tonight I also learned from you that uh, it, it's quite interesting that even such a large uh, threat or ONF, you can, uh, you, you know, securely shoot uh, close the nasal layer because nasal layer dissection also you have to be careful because uh, if you're not careful enough, you can you can also penetrate the uh, the 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 nasal layer so that your closure will be uh, at risk. Yes. So, so I think uh, this is a key point. Maybe tonight, uh, many of us will learn from that technique and to close the the ONF, uh, and uh, that's that's very important part. And I would also like uh, to uh, you know to ask you to maybe in the future you could uh, uh, talk about the the speech result and also the uh, the growth result. Uh, certainly, with the very big uh, lateral low surface that allow to regenerate, that must be covered with the scar tissue. So, uh, for the adult, it may be okay, but for the growing uh, patient, then the dental alveolar development may be influenced by the yes. scar tissue. So, this is something that uh, in the future we need to uh, we need to pay attention. Yes. And also uh, the speech result, because uh, this is still controversial uh, for certain age, uh, old, older the uh, certain age than the certain age, then uh, you if you simply close the, the palate uh, without using fungal fret, still the speech may not be adequate for, for many older patients. That, uh, that's also uh, an issue. Certainly you can do a secondary uh, uh, operation to deal with the speech result. So uh, tonight is very nice presentation that you can need. And I, I think many of us will, will learn from your presentation. Thank you again. And, uh, thank you, Professor Lo. And I, I always owe to your advice. When you came to Faisalabad in 2005, and you advised me to document our results and write papers and share our experience with friends all over the globe. So taking your advice, we have documented our results. And, uh, I, and now these days I'm going to record most of the cleft palate surgeries using the endoscope. And maybe after a year or two, we can come up with uh, good video surgeries of almost every type of primary cleft palate repair and maybe difficult uh, palatal fistula closure and cover. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Professor Lo. Now um, uh, we'll move on to our Q&A session. And um, first, before we move on to our Q&A session, I'd like to apologize because there are too many uh, questions for Professor Fayyad. It's, it's very active in our chat room, so um, I, doubt we'll get through every single question, but um, we'll hopefully try to answer most of them. So uh, first of all, um, Dr. Uh, Sama Paras wants to ask Professor Fayaz uh, whether you use turnover flaps for to close the nasal layer. Basically, for the turnover flap, we usually keep two or three or four millimeter tissues around the fistula. And then we uh, make incision around 
the fistula margin and then we would like to raise the mucoperiosteal flap on both sides and then we will dissect the nasal mucosa from under the palatine shelf on both sides so that the the nasal mucosa can be approximated in the midline without any tension if there is any tension then we need to dissect the nasal mucosa under the bony palatine shelf on one or two sides so that's the way we do the turn in flaps Okay, and um, our, for our next question, Dr. Nang wants to ask whether you use osteotomy for pedicle mobilization. The last, the last osteotomy I did was probably in 2003. After mm -hmm. that, I never needed it because now we can uh, dissect the pedicle so comfortably and so radically, we do not need any osteotomy. And uh, Dr. Amar wants to ask whether there are any tips or advice that you would give to uh, beginners on how to perform a safe dissection of the muscle and the nasal layer. Actually, you see, there's always a good learning curve. Mm -hmm. You need to see some good videos. Even Professor Somerled video is available on the YouTube. And you need to see those videos uh, many, many times, and uh, you need to start the dissection of the muscle just posterior to the posterior nasal spine and try to find a plane between the nasal mucosa and the muscle. If you can find a plane posterior to the nasal spine between the nasal mucosa and the muscle, that will guide you to do the dissection. Otherwise, uh, sometimes you can use a knife to cut the muscle and when you can see a tinge of the nasal mucosa, it is from that uh, area, you need, you can use the scissor, but you need to put the, uh, keep the tip of the scissor on the anterior side so that you cannot puncture the nasal mucosa. Okay. Um... And our next question is from um, Dr. Saeed. How do you manage nasal perforations? Yes. Uh, if uh, just when we dissect the nasal mucosa or when we do the levator dissection, uh, we usually get sometimes a perforation in the nasal mucosa. If the nasal perforation is small, let's say, uh, two or three millimeter wide, you can leave it as such, but if it is larger, four or five or six millimeter, then uh, we need to use uh, five zero vicral suture to close those perforations. Okay, and for our next question, um, it's from Dr. Yuan. Uh, would you do uh, a small anterior palatal fistula repair with alveolar bone grafting at the same setting? No, uh, actually, uh, if, uh, if we have a patient with complete cleft lip and palate, let's say unilateral, and if the patient reports to our clinic uh, before three months of age, we will do the oh, lip repair and we close the, uh, we close the nasal floor as well. If the patient reports to us at a later age, let's say nine months, so at that time we will do the palate repair, but we will make our incision more anterior, and we will close the nasal defect. Uh, we will close the, uh, we will reconstruct the nasal floor on the cleft side as well. And if we have a patient who is bilateral complete cleft palate patient, let's say with projecting pre-maxilla, we have a policy that we will do lip adhesion, but while doing lip adhesion, we will reconstruct the nasal floor on one side, mostly the wider side. And then after uh, nine months of age, we do the palate repair, but when we do the palate repair, we close the nasal floor on the other side. So when we 
repair the cleft lip, we do not have any fistula under the lip. I usually call it labionasal fistula because it is the nasal, labionasal fistula which is under the lip and goes into the nose. So we have a policy that we will close the any fistula before we are going to do ABG. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of our participants are interested in your um, uh, formula for your lidokine adrenaline and transamic acid injection. Would you mind sharing it with us? Yes. Uh, normally, what we do is we take five milliliter of xylokine and then we take 0.4 cc of adrenaline and we dilute it to uh, 5 cc and then we will add 250 milligram of tranexamic acid to make it to make it uh, let's say you we can say it cocktail mm -hmm. and then we inject it on both sides of the palate and but we always wait for seven minutes religiously we do not start immediately after putting the infiltration because sometimes there's more bleeding and we waste more time in hemostasis than if we have waited for seven minutes. If the patient is adult, we will ask our anesthesiologist to give tranexamic acid intravenous as well. And we, in adult patient, we wait for 10 minutes as, as always. Thank you. And our friend Ivy uh, Tango wants to ask you, uh, has any of your patients received pharyngeal flap takedown and whether there is a definite criteria for, uh, to, um, for the pharyngeal flap takedown? Pharyngeal flap breakdown? Uh, takedown. Were you? Yes. Okay. Okay. If I, if I have understand, understood your question properly, uh, then we in in patients who are more than four years old let's say it's a primary cleft palate patient never been operated if the uh, if the randal type is one or two we would go for the palate repair but if it is randal type three which means the uvula is touching the anterior half of the adenoid pad are the uvula is anterior to the uh, anterior to the adenoid pad? In that case, we would add pharyngeal flap at the same stage, and we have a policy that we will not take more than sixty percent of the width of the posterior pharyngeal wall. That means we leave twenty percent area on both sides for breathing. So in our series, we do not have any obstructive sleep apnea patient except probably two or three where we had to revise the pharyngeal flap. Otherwise, uh, we do pharyngeal flap even during our missions and we have never regretted. And uh, Dr. Sumati is interested in the use of honey in your treatment. So uh, could you further explain that? Yes, you see, uh, In our holy book, Quran, Allah has said that there is a, a cure for mankind in honey. I have been using honey probably for the last 25 years. I use even in diabetic wounds. And we use the sugar systemically by giving insulin or other hypoglycemic agent. But for the wound part, I always use honey in any wound, in, in dirty wounds, in surgical wound, in post-traumatic wound, or even in a diabetic wound. The honey has a multi-fested action. It provides moist environment to the wound. It increases the lymph flow. It has an acidic pH around five, which will kill the bacteria. It has an enzyme which can kill the bacteria. It promotes angiogenesis and it 
provide the nutrition to the wound which nothing else can provide so the honey is the best medicine to manage any wound uh, this is my experience and i have shared uh, it in many of uh, my presentation and we have a one full chapter in our book the use of honey in cleft palate patients Okay, thank you, Professor Fayaz. But due to the time restraint, I think we'll end the Q&A session here. We'll collect the remainder of the questions and then ask Professor Fayaz to answer them and then we'll post them on our uh, Facebook um, group. So- um, What I can do, I yes. can add my email address over here. So if any friend wants to follow up with questions, uh, they, they, they can contact me on this email, email address. That, that would be fantastic, Professor Fayez. Yeah. We thank you for that. And even I, I, am, I can add my uh, WhatsApp number over here. If anybody wants to uh, ask me a question, they are welcome on this number. Thank you, Professor Fayez. And uh, I think we'll return the scene back to <laughs> Professor okay. Cho. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Professor Fayez, for your uh, very informative and uh, comprehensive talk. I, I think you have a much more various type of the defect over the palate. I think you just show very minimal cases for us. I think in the future, uh, we, we need more time to, to, to discuss with you. Uh, at, at here times, I would like to spend some time to invite Professor Frank Chen uh, this year, our chair for the Chang'an Forum 2022 to give us some introduction and the promotion for all our participants here. Yeah, please, Professor Frank Chen. Uh, thank you, Bang Yun, and hi, Fayas. Uh, it's nice to see you. And I just want to buy you, borrow you one minute. So can I share the, the screen? Yes, please. This year, our forum will be uh, 29 and the 30 of October. It's just remain almost uh, one month. If you are not registered, register, please register. This is one of patients, one year, one year old. Uh, you can notice the scar is not visible. And uh, this year we have different from before. This year we have three techniques. Uh, Dr. Fisher's technique, Mona and the Millard. And I think uh, if you are interested in each one and difference each one, and we will emphasize preparation, surgical technique, muscle repair, and the post-operative care. And the priest join us on the forum. On the palatal party currently we almost uh, do not see any ONF anymore. And uh, we have very good uh, speech outcome. In our center, we have only 5% of BPI. And uh, most of them do not have any gross disturbance. How we did it, uh, please join us. And uh, we will tell you the detail. And uh, even we, don't, we have less and less BPI. Myself, I do not have any BPI case for the last five years. However, we still want to discuss the surgery for VPI, advantage, disadvantage. And our two senior speech pathologists, for the first time, both of them were joining us. They will tell us how to do the speech evaluation, the endoscopic evaluation, and the, the choose type of surgery for surgeon to perform. For available graft, it's dimen three-dimensional defect. And uh, <clears throat> it's important you address that this three-dimensional defect to achieve a good outcome. And this is one of my recent patients. You can see the, the bone graft survival is almost fulfilled the entire gap. Recently, we introduced the new technique, so-called trifine three fine technique. It's only need one, one centimeter wound and use 
a specific instrument that learn from our uh, orthopedic. They do spine uh, endoscopic spine surgery. They borrow a, a special instrument. And the, this patient, you cannot imagine, it's just three days after uh, a, a better bone graft. We harvest the bone, and you can see, he told me that there's no, no pain, no pain, and no pain. And he can jump so high. And then you can easily ha harvest uh, uh, three millimeter, eight millimeter from this technique. Even though uh, Bang Yun uh, did a study, the defect is only 1.2 centimeter cubic of defect. And this year, uh, Dr. Uh, <clears throat> Yao, he learned the uh, 3D uh, OGS simulation from Jen Sha in US. And uh, he is very familiar with the Simple and Dolphin program. And he will explain us the difference between CLEP OGS and the normal OGS, how to do the simulation, the advanced Masila, setback mandible. And uh, he will also address how to uh, uh, how to remove the posterior protrusion of distal segment. Sometimes this segment is palpable and the remove of medial pterygoid muscle. And the Dr. Yao, I think for this year, he will explain in detail how he, he do the 3D simulation himself, do the CAT scan, printer the intermediate and final uh, sprint and how to perform the surgery uh, on computer and uh, much easier than in the, uh, uh, the OR scenario. For the secondary deep nose uh, revision, for the nose, right now we have a red cartilage. We have ear cartilage rubbed with the fascia. We have uh, artificial uh, imprint. We have... Uh, uh, thermal fat for the dose augmentation. We also have nasal septum for the, for the columella struck button graft and the tip elevation. And the, how to choose each time and the, how the surgeon decide. And the, this year we have a complete discussion of this. Of course, for the first time, uh, in the old time, the lip should be revised with redo chiropathy. And the, this year I will do a presentation over the fat graph, over the upper lip to improve the future current projection. And this paper is only under uh, figure revision by PIS. If I revise the PCL or PI, the, the figure, they were accepted on this year. Dr. Zhen Chong Chen will explain the hemifacial microsovia and the micro microtia, how to do the microtia reconstruction. And the Dr. Ying An Chen, who is an expert on uh, hemifacial microsomia OGS, she will do the presentation of hemifacial microsomia OGS. Like this patient, you can see the microtia and the hemifacial microsomia. After ear and the orthognatic surgery, reconstruction. You can see before, after, before, after. How to do that? 3D CAT scan, surgical simulation, surgical detail. And uh, I, I will not explain how, because the Ying An and the Zhen Zhongquan will explain. And especially Zhen Zhongquan, right now he is not only use red cartilage, he use artificial, so that the ear can be performed um, earlier um, of age. And he will explain in detail how to do the microtia. Finally, this year we also added that the perirhombal disease a frequently see disease with hemifacial atrophy, parafrontal depression, upper lip depression, entire face depression, psychoma asymmetry, how to do it in one surgery to correct the entire bone soft tissue deficiency. This is before, after, three-quarter view. 
So this is our program. Please join us 29 and 30. Just register the day, please, everyone. And uh, we hope to see you on our forum 2022. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Uh, actually, this year, the forum in Chang'an still remains online meeting. So that will be uh, see you uh, in the in the air. And the one minute to Gloria, uh, I really like that invited you to come uh, give us some comments. So one minute to Gloria to introduce. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Cho. So my deep, deepest apologies for not being able to address our intention clearly earlier. So the International Cranial Facial Club is hoping that this community could grow and provide a better platform for surgeons and physicians. So um, we would like to invite you to participate in a short survey so that we can have a better understanding idea of how your experience in attending the ICC webinar is and also how the online meeting has changed during pre-COVID and post-COVID times in general. So the link to our Google form is posted in the chatting room and on our Facebook page. Um, we will be looking through all the feedbacks individually and we will we value everyone's um, opinion. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, we look forward to hear from all of you. Okay, thank you, Gloria. And uh, finally, uh, routinely, we would like to invite uh, all the participants to turn on your screen and uh, please show your smile, uh, with us very important uh, Professor Fayez here. Uh, I know Professor Fayez invited a lot of uh, friends uh, all over the world to join ICC. So we really so honor and privileged to uh, have all of you. I think uh, lots of you is the first time to come here in this platform. And I also to hope you guys can remain and always support us. And uh, we will um, every two weeks or three weeks to deliver some the certain the related to the topic about the cranial facial surgery here for, for you guys. Yeah, thank you. So I will count to three and please give us a smile or give us some uh, give me a little heart. One, two, cheese. And uh, next, yeah, today we have several page. We're, we're a little bit busy. And uh, please, okay, I will count to three to give us a cheese. One, two, cheese. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. uh, once again, finally, I will uh, to ask Professor Honda and the Professor Murari, uh, the two the panelists, do you have any more comment or question for Professor Fayez? Uh, it's okay, thank you very much, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nisha, okay. Okay, so good morning and good evening. Thank you for your participation here with us and uh, looking forward to your next, and we'll see you here as well. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you all. Thank you. And uh, Professor Fayas, I will refer to you all the questions in the chatting room. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, sure. And uh, probably you can maybe to give me the answer uh, and I can post it uh, on the Facebook, okay? Oh, and to all the audience. I, thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much, so kind. Very See excellent. You. Thank you. Thank you. See you. <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you, Junior. Okay, thank you. Okay, Bye -bye. thank you. Bye-bye.